All right, so we wanted to go over this practice test with you before the test. So we start off with some pattern questions. You can see it says test 1-P1, that's first quarter, practice test number one, fall 2020. This is what a normal test would look like in our class. Um, obviously, it's going to be a little bit different this year with online, so we're going to work through that with you. Um, as we go. So we see this pattern, we see all these fractions. This really uh, intimidates students sometimes, but if you focus on a couple things here, this problem gets a little bit easier. So look for this kind of problem um, on stuff that we give you. These two numbers right here. Okay. So first of all, you should notice that these uh, are alternating signs. So it's negative, and then it's positive, then it's negative, then it's positive, then it's negative. So that pretty much happens when we're multiplying something. So if you look at this here, this is going to be, um, and, and let's avoid these fractions here. Let's focus on these two nice numbers down here. So we have 12 times some number x equals negative 42. Okay? Because if the signs are alternating, that means we're multiplying or dividing by a negative number. So we're taking 12 times some number, and we're ending up with negative 42. So it should make sense that that number is going to be negative. That's multiplying by a negative number is what's going to make something alternate signs like that. So we just need to divide both sides by 2, uh, by 12, sorry, by 12. And now we can reduce both of these, divide them both by 2, or divide them both by 6 would be good. So divided by 6, that's going to be negative 7, and divided by 6, that's going to be 2. So we're multiplying by negative 7 halves. So that's describing the pattern. And then it says find the sixth term. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the sixth term happens to be the next term. So we just need to multiply uh, negative 7 halves by 42. So 42 over 2 is 21. So we're going to have 21 times 7. So that's going to be 147. And that was a negative 42, sorry. So a negative times a negative is a positive. So that next number is going to be 147. Okay. Now here, when we look at this list of numbers, hopefully they stand out to us uh, pretty well. But um, hopefully you recognize them. So we can see these numbers are increasing. So if we look at this, that's plus 8. That's plus 16. That's plus 24. So then we talked about looking here. That's plus 8 and plus 8. So that's quadratic. That's the second difference. When the second difference is constant, we have a quadratic. We talked about it in the, in the notes. Second difference means that it's quadratic, means that it's squared. So if we think about it, <clears throat> this would be, now this one's a nice one. So we go, this is the first number, the second number, the third number. Um, the fourth number. So actually, it's not going to follow our nice pattern that way. It is quadratic, but what we are noticing here is that it's actually, these are all odd. And so hopefully you would notice that that's 1 squared, and this is 3 squared, and this is 5 squared, and that's 7 squared. So um, odd squared numbers is what we're looking at, starting with 1. 1 squared, 3 squared, 5 squared, 7 squared. Now, this asks for the sixth term also, so that would be 2 more. So you see we have two lines down here. So that was 7 squared, so the next one's going to be 9 squared and then 11 squared. So 9 squared is 81, and 11 squared is 121. So there's probably a way to do it with this, but it might get a little complicated. So let's look at the next one 
And when you look at this, if you look at them separate, look at the numerators and the denominators separately. Okay, so. So far. All right. So, if you try to look at the fractions by themselves, it's pretty intimidating. But if you look at the numerator and the denominator separately, the numerator is being multiplied by two. So the numerator is multiplied by two, and the denominator goes down 4, and then it goes down 4 again from 3 to negative 1, and then down 4 again from negative 1 to negative 5. So we are, uh, the denominator is subtracting 4. Okay, so find the next three terms. So if we, so those are going to stay negative, and I need to double the numerator, and we need to subtract 4 from the denominator, so that's going to be 9. And then double that, and subtract. Now the subtracting 4, it's really negative 9, so subtract 4, it's going to be negative 13. And then double that, 128. When we have a negative fraction, we normally put it on the top, or maybe the side. We, we don't write it on the bottom. Okay. And this one. Now, that's adding 3.3, that's adding 9 point something. So we're adding a different amount. So maybe we are multiplying here. So you could go 3 um, times, I'm going to use R for a common ratio. You could use X if you want to. I used X up there on example 1. Um, so 3 times the common ratio equals 6.3. So if we divide both sides by 3, we get that r equals 2.1. Now if we wanted to test that out, we could multiply um, 6 times 2.1 and see what we get. And if you multiply 6.3 times 2.1, you do get this. So that proves that we are multiplying by 2.1. Now we have to do... This just says the next term, so that's good. So we're multiplying this decimal out. So we don't use calculators in this class until chapter 9, just for a little bit. So um, you shouldn't be using calculators on your uh, tests or anything like that. So we are testing our decimal rules here. So that's going to be 3, 2, 3, 1, 0, 6, 4, 6, Two, and so that's going to be three, eight, seven. Now the decimal multiplication rule is that however many decimals are in the problem, that's how many decimals should be in the answer. So there's three, so there should be three down here. And then, um, hold on a second here, 20... That was 7, 1 and 6 is 7, and then 2. So 27.783. All right. So that uh, takes care of the pattern section there. Let's move on to the points, lines, and planes. So remember, we want to stay alphabetical, and, and it says stay in plane EFG if possible. So EFG is the ground. If you think of that as a building or something like that. So plain EFG is the ground. So we want our answers to be on the ground as much as possible. So it says give three collinear points on the ground. So there are actually are only three collinear points in the entire picture. So it has to be those. So E, H, and I needs to be in alphabetical order if possible. And that is good. So name two line segments on the ground. So when you look on the ground, the best letter on the ground is E. So a line segment, two line segments. So one line segment, uh, the next best letter on the ground is F. So we'll say EF. And um, now 
Try not to create new segments. So you'd say the next best letter on the ground is G. So you might say E segment EG. But we don't really have an EG on the picture. Let's, let's not make up new segments if we don't have to. We have uh, EH right here. So that would be our next best choice. And segments have the little dash above them. All right. So um, I guess I could come over here since this is naming and this is naming from this picture. Name four non-coplanar points. Now, first of all, you're supposed to be alphabetical, but you're also supposed to be in plain EFG. So to be non-coplanar, what we want is we want to make a triangle, and then we want a point off the triangle like a pyramid. That's an upside-down triangular pyramid. It's a triangular period, not like the Luxor. The Luxor has a square as the base. This pyramid would have a triangle as the base. So I need a triangle on the ground, because all our answers are supposed to be on the ground. So a triangle on the ground would be E, F, and H. Or E, F, and G, sorry. E, F, and G. G is better than H alphabetically. So E, F, and G makes a triangle on the ground, and then A is in the air. It's on the roof. If this is a building, A is on the roof. So we're going to go A, and then we're going to go E, F, G. Because E, F, G make a triangle. And then we can connect those to the point on the roof, and that'll give us uh, not a flat plane. All right, opposite rays. So opposite rays start at the same point and go in opposite directions. So to do um, to have opposite rays, we need three points, and the only place we have three points on a line are, is here. And so I'm going to just show that here. So we have H E. That's one ray. Opposite rays uh, shoot out from each other and go in opposite directions. And then we have this. All right, so we have HE and we have HI. So notice how opposite rays start with the same letter because they're both shooting out from that point. Okay. Try and keep that picture in there. What is the intersection, if possible? Line AB. So what you can do if you, with your pencil is trace over and see if they intersect. So line AB is this line on, this, on the roof, and line EI is on the ground. So you have a line on the roof, and you have a line on the ground. So those are not going to intersect each other. right? This is up in the air, and this is down on the ground. So it looks like they're going to intersect each other over here, but you have to realize that this is in the air, so it's going to go over this line. So that's not possible for those two lines to intersect each other. All right, um, plane BCD. So BCD, that's the roof, the ceiling. That's the top. So we want to know where does the top intersect AEH. So AEH depends which way you're looking at it. If we're over here looking at it this way, that's the front. Some people want to say that's the front, but if we're looking here, I'm going to call it the front. It's the closest thing to us. So where does the top intersect the front? Here. So, oops, right here. A, D. Now, the thing is, though, a plane goes on forever. So a plane is infinite. So you have to imagine that ceiling going on forever and the front side going on forever. And so that segment, AD, is going to go on forever. And if a segment goes on forever, it's a line. All right. Line EH and point I. Line EH and point I. Well, where do they intersect? The line goes right through the point. So they intersect at the point I. Okay. Which of the following are coplanar? This is just yes or no. So line segment AE, which is right here, and line segment GH, which is over here. So those are not, kind of goes like, uh, you can't see that very well on the screen. So AE is like a pole in the ground, standing in the ground, or that edge of the building. And then this is over here on the side. So they're not going to intersect each other. So, no, they don't intersect. Line EI, that's this line in the front here. 
and line segment DH. So line segment DH hits line EI at H. So yes, if you want to say where they intersect at H. Oh, coplanar, sorry. So they intersect and they form an upside down T, and so that's a flat surface. So if we have those two, any two lines or line segments or rays that intersect, um, if it forms the letter T, you can write the letter T on a piece of paper, so that's coplanar. If two lines intersect, that makes an X. You can write an X on a piece of paper. So yes, they're coplanar. Line EH, EH is right here, and point B. So the thing about line EH and point B is that we can connect those two points to point B, and that makes a triangle. And if you have a triangle, a triangle is a flat surface. So if you can make a triangle out of it, it is coplanar. Okay, give a counterexample. No whole numbers are prime. No whole numbers are prime. Um, that's a bit odd. All, all prime numbers are whole. So, um, two is a counterexample. Three. Interesting. All right, that's just for me. It means I want to change it. Okay. And down here. S is, so sketch this situation. S is between T and V. S is between T and V. So I don't know how much space I need here. So it would be better if I was using a pencil. Uh, T and V. S is between this. Uh, R is between T and S. T is between R and Q. All right. QV is 15. That's the whole thing. QT is 5. And TR, RS, and SV are all equal. So if they're all equal, I can call them X. So that's going to be X, X, and X. Now I didn't draw it. Like SV looks a lot bigger. But the picture is just to help me. If you, if you did it in pencil, if you want to erase it and move it closer so they look the same size, you can, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so usually we have a spot for an equation as well. So the whole thing is 15, and we have 3x and 5. So that's going to be 3x plus 5 equals 15. So if you subtract 5 from both sides, you're going to get 3x equals 10. And if you divide by 3, you're going to get x equals 10 thirds. So the first question is rs. rs is x, so that's going to be 10 thirds. Okay, TS is twice as big as that, so that's going to be 20 thirds. Okay, um, QS, QS is going to be 20 thirds plus 5. 20 thirds plus 5. Well, 5, if we get a common denominator, multiply this by 3 over 3, is 15 over 3. 15 over 3 is 5. So that's going to be 35 over 3. And QR, QR is going to be 10 over 3 plus 5. And again, we just did that's 5 is 15, so that's 25 over 3. Good. Okay, sketch two planes that intersect. So this gets a little bit tricky, maybe. So one way to do it is... I can't really give myself enough space there. So I'm going to have this plane here coming down like this. And then I'm going to have another plane intersect it right here. So this is probably a 
a little bit tricky here. So, so when a plane goes behind another plane, we want to use a dotted line. So that's going to be over there. I need to make this go over further. So that's going to go like that. So we've got that plane going behind there, and then we have this plane coming down, so that's going to be a dotted line here. And that'll come down like that. And then, maybe I went too far there. All right, so there's one example. Now, I suppose you could make it a little bit easier by not drawing the back parts of those planes there. And you could have just drawn the front here and have them come together like that. But let's go with that for now. All right, finally, last thing on the front page here. Uh, draw, okay, so we have two intersecting lines. Okay, so let's start with that. So there's a line. And here's a line. And they're intersecting at that point right there. And then it says, draw a third line that intersects the other two lines at different points. So not through that same point. So there's several different places we could put that. I'm going to put it right there. So there's a third line that crosses, intersects the other two lines at two different points. Okay. So that's the front, and uh, Ms. Muko will be doing the back of that for you.